بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome again to another episode of your weekly Islamic chat show guest of the week coming to you from Sharjah TV Sharjah Broadcasting Authority as always I'm your host Ismail Bullock and today inshallah we want to talk about the importance of righteous actions and how we can correlate actions with faith can you have faith without actions and can you etc so we're going to discuss that inshallah today and to do that is with with us is brother Muhammad Khan assalamu alaikum alaikum assalamu alaikum so we want to talk I guess about righteous actions we can define what righteous actions are what they are in general and we can also connect them to the to the aspect of faith Basically, uh, if we see that every human being who is living on this earth, Muslim, non-Muslim, we would like him to think and ask this question as to why does he exist? What is he doing on this earth? What is the purpose of his life? And if he finds the answer that is given to us by our God, our Creator, and this is logical because the one who created us can tell us what is the purpose of our creation, which Allah defines in the Quran, in Surah Dhariyat, that I have created not the jinn and men except to worship me. So when we come to know that this is the purpose of our existence, this is the purpose why we were created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to serve Him, then we will come to know that worship cannot be complete without two main components. That is Iman and Amlu Salihat. Because when we come to know, when we realize that our purpose of existence is to worship Allah. We need to know how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we fulfill this purpose of our existence? We cannot go about saying that, okay, I think this is how I can please Allah. This is how I can worship Allah. This will take me closer to Allah. Or Fulan Fulan says that this is how you can come closer to Allah. This will please Allah. This is not how we can go about. Rationally, we have to have evidence from the Creator Himself. And that has to be through revelation and textual evidence. So when we see that the purpose of existence is to worship Allah, and when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have this component of Iman and Amlus Salihat, and if we read the Quran in several places, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Wherever you find the word, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا, those who believe, it will be followed by Amlus Salihat. Or if you find, the statement as to those who work righteous, it will be followed by some component of faith. They work righteous and they do not associate with Allah any partners. They work righteous and they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can see this is from those verses, just those verses you mentioned, we can see that this clearly there's a, it necessitates that if you have faith, then this faith or this level of faith has to in some way manifest itself in your actions that's right so if someone says for example i have true strong faith confident my faith is so high and so strong but they're committing sins day and night and hardly any good deeds and in reality that's not the case and we have that famous saying where someone says like yeah you know i believe in my heart or i have a really good heart in reality if you have a really good heart it must show in your actions. Even from a, even from a non-Muslim perspective, if someone says, you know, I have a really good heart, but the guy is a is a thief and a liar and he he robs people, no one's going to really think, no one's going to take him serious that you do have a good heart. So likewise, Islamically, if you say you have a good heart, uh, it has to be manifest in the rest in, in your actions. And we know that from the Hadith where the Prophet said, "Allah said, Ala inna, inna fil jasadi mudga idha salahat salahat al jasadu kulluhu wa idha fasadat." He said that indeed in every man there is, or every human being, there is a morsel of flesh. That if it is good, the rest of the body is good. And if it is bad or corrupt, the rest of the body is corrupt. Indeed it's the heart. So we see if you do really have strong faith, if you do really have a good heart, then this has to be manifest. In, you know, you must see some of this goodness coming out in your, the way you, your actions, the way you speak. Obviously the, the worship, but even in the way you carry yourself. So we have find many people who are practicing Muslims 
and seem to be practicing Muslims, they may pray five times a day, they may have a big beard, they may say we are on the way of the, of the Salaf, the, of the pious predecessors, but they have extremely bad manners and aggression and foul mouth, and in reality, they don't have that faith that they think they have. True. Otherwise, it would have to manifest also in their character. True. And this is uh, about our salvation. Uh, we should not take this very lightly as to those who say that, okay, we, have, we, we believe in Allah, but you know, when it comes to actions, they are very lazy or lethargic uh, in that aspect because this is about our salvation. If we want salvation, it is only through this path that is Iman and righteous deeds. As the Prophet ﷺ, he also described in the Hadith and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah in the last two ayahs that, أَمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مَنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّ الْآمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ That the messenger and the believers, they believe in Allah, they believe in the angels, they believe in the books, and they believe in the messengers. This is a part of pillars of faith. And it's interesting because the verse goes on, وَقَالُوا سَمَعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا And say, we, we, have, we have heard and we obey. So this is also an important thing. Not just to say that we believe in those things, the idea is after that, hearing that these things are part of Iman and to obey, to follow, to put them into practice as much as we can. So that's an important aspect as well. True. This was a quality of the Sahaba, which uh, you know, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us this quality rather than you know, arguments and you know, putting our own shallow understanding. This, the quality of the Sahaba was Samirna wa ta'ana. They used to hear and they used to obey. So this, from this verse and from another verse, that's Surah Nisa number 136, we come to know where Allah mentions those who disbelieve in Allah in the angels, in the books, in the messengers, and the last day. So this verse mentions five pillars of Iman. And in the hadith of Sayyid Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the famous hadith of Kitab al-Iman, hadith number one, where the Prophet ﷺ told us and taught us about the pillars of Iman. What is faith and what is to believe in uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah's messenger mentioned belief in Allah, in the messengers, in the angels, in the books, on the last day, and the Qadr of Allah, the divine decree, the good and bad. It's interesting you mentioned that, that verse because some people will say, okay, but in this verse there's only five pillars. And what the scholars have said, they've said that in this particular verse it wasn't mentioned Qadr because Qadr is part of the belief in Allah. If you truly believe in Allah, then you have to believe that Allah knows everything and has destined everything and everything is written in advance. So that's, they said in this verse, it is actually, Qadr is actually connected to belief, belief in, in Allah. Allah. That's so right. I just wanted to clarify that for the viewers. Yeah. Anyhow, if we see two verses and even uh, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu so overall we come to know that these are the six pillars of Iman. And Iman, faith, consists of three aspects as the scholars have described. Number one is to believe in your heart. So when we say believe, uh, we believe in Allah, we believe in the seen and unseen matters. We believe in Allah, we have not seen Him, but we believe in Allah to be our Rabb, to be our uh, Creator, our Khaliq. We believe in all the messengers. We don't say that, you know, this is, uh, we don't deny such as Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam. We believe in the messengers and all the messengers which were sent. We believe in the angels, although we have not seen them. It's a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have this belief that, you know, this is a creation of Allah made out of light and they are obedient to Allah. There are angels, you know, who record they are angels who guard the hell. They are angels who bring revelation. So we believe in the angels. We believe in the last day that there will be a day where justice will be given to everyone. And th that's day of, it's also known as the day of judgment, the day of recompense, the day of uh, hashar. It's also known as, you know, uh, the day of reckoning. And this day, everyone will see what they have done in this world. That's the day of basically accountability. Whatever you have done in this world, that's the day of results. The results will be out and people will go to hell and hellfire. May Allah protect us from hell mm. and make us from the people of Jannah. And similarly, we believe in the divine decree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom, in his uh, qadr, he knows everything and he has, you know, everything is written, the good and bad. And whatever comes, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is belief from the heart. We believe and this is what we testify. And this is with 100% confirmation, without any doubt, without uh, any doubt, when it comes to the books, the angels, the messengers, and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down upon us. It's interesting to mention as well, because this is also connected to actions. Um, 
even in relation to the belief that everything is pre-written, um, some of the Sahaba, they said, O oh Rasulullah, so if this means everything is written, should we not make an effort? Because whatever is destined for us to do, we'll do it. And he said, no, all of you make the best effort you can and everybody will reach or will get what was written for him. But he said, you still make the effort. So you make the effort to be the best person you can. And he said, and everybody will reach that what was, was planned for them. That's right. And the second point is about the belief through the faith through your proclamation. Because uh, someone who has something in his heart and he has contrary on his tongue, this is a type of you know, hypocrisy. Because what is in your heart, what you believe in, it has to be reflected. That is what you proclaim. So therefore, we proclaim through our tongue, through the azkar, and through accepting the message of Islam and through accepting these pillars of faith. Because for example, if you have an employee in the company and this employee, he goes to work, he takes his salary, he does everything. But on the other hand, you know, he has uh, this, this bad character towards his managers, towards his CEO. He abuses them, he uses foul language. He has something in his heart, but he has something else on his tongue. So similarly, we see that such a person, if you know, uh, we, we will say such a person, he is to be condemned. He is not a, a good person in the general sense because he has something in his heart and he has something else to proclaim because whatever you believe in, it has to be reflected through a proclamation. Similarly, we say that, you know, those who say we believe, they have to accept the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to accept what Allah revealed. They have to accept Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as their judge, as a messenger because Allah mentioned in the Quran, you cannot truly believe until you make Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as the judge in your affairs. So, you know, where people, they, they say, okay, we believe in Allah, we do righteous deeds, we pray, we perform hajj, everything. But then when it comes to some matters such as inheritance, you know, giving a share to the daughter, they, they try to, you know, escape this. When it comes to other matters which Allah has revealed. So we have to accept whatever Allah revealed to us completely. We cannot go about, you know, picking and choosing. This is what the previous nations did and they were destroyed. The punishment of Allah came because they used to pick and choose and they used to, you know, go about their own way, trying to, you know, na'uzu billah, deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas they were deceiving themselves. So number one is that we, we believe in these pillars of faith from our heart. And number two is that we proclaim this testification and this, this witness of, you know, Islam about the pillars of Iman. We proclaim this from our tongue and from our shahada. And number three, the article of faith is through actions. And this is our focus that Iman consists of actions. Faith is followed by actions and faith cannot be complete until and unless it's followed by actions. And this is, this is what all the Salaf al uh, all the scholars, Tabi'in, Tabi Tabi'in, they agree with, agreed upon this that, you know, faith, it consists of actions. No one came up with the idea that, you know, you just say believe, you just, you know, proclaim that, you know, I believe in Allah and then you don't need to do righteous deeds. Except some sects which were, you know, broken out, such as Murji'ah, they came up that, you know, you don't need to have righteous deeds. Faith is only proclamation of your tongue. And even if you sin, you commit, you know, sins which can take you out of Islam, you still have that belief and you will not uh, increase or decrease in Iman. Just hold you on that point. Join us inshallah after this short break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. So before the break, obviously, we'd focused on the importance of the faith and how all the scholars of the past and those who are on the, 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 the true path have always said that there has to be a relation and there is a clear relation between having faith and then having actions. And it's not enough just to say, I believe, and then never do any righteous deeds and never pray and never do anything that shows in any way that you're connected to this statement that you made. So this is very important as well that the, the actions they have a clear there are a clear, clear result in reality or like we mentioned earlier a manifestation of the person's faith. That's right and sadly because uh, nowadays what we see is a lot of people they come up with this idea they say I love Islam I love Allah Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will respect the Quran, they kiss the Quran, they keep the Quran. 
they have these slogans on Facebook, they have display pictures on what they on social media and different platforms. They say that we love Islam. They say that we, you know, love uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they say we, we believe in all the aspects. But when it comes to actions, they are way behind. When it comes to the, the basic, the first and basic pillar of Islam, that is Salah, you see them neglecting this aspect. And out of negligence, it's either out of ignorance or arrogance, but they neglect it as if, you know, it's nothing. Whereas, you know, the Sahaba, they were very, you know, particular about Salah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, mentioned that, you know, the difference between us and them, a Muslim and a Mushrik is Salah. The differentiator is Salah. So similarly, other acts of worship when it comes to paying zakah, many are in a position, they have the wealth, they are above the nisab level, but they don't pay the zakah. Many can go and perform hajj, but they delay it for no reason. They can go and perform hajj. Still, they say it's not required. So similarly, we say that, you know, such people are on the danger line and we need to get this right. We need to fix this, that Iman, it consists of actions. You can't just say that I believe in Allah and, you know, you don't do anything. You know, it's just like uh, a, a university student. He takes admission in the university. He goes to the school. He goes to the university and he says, OK, this is my class. These are the subjects which I'm studying. This is my teacher. I agree to this. This is my principal. This is my classroom. But ultimately, he doesn't go and study. He doesn't appear for the examinations. He doesn't uh, appear for, you know, the tests and for the orals, whatever uh, is, is prescribed by the university. He doesn't follow his syllabus. So what do you call such a person? Either he will fail or he, either he will be kicked out. So why don't we apply the similitude when it comes to our deen? Because in deen, we say we believe, but when it comes to following the syllabus, the Quran and Sunnah, when it comes to the prescribed matters, which Allah has prescribed, the halal, the haram, the faraid, the, the forbidden, we have to follow these and we have to follow the syllabus of Quran and Sunnah for our salvation. We can't just go about saying that, you know, we believe, we believe and we love Allah. And on the other hand, we don't, you know, follow uh, what Allah and his messenger has prescribed for us. As Allah mentioned in the Quran, Surah Al-Imran, let's say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you truly love Allah, then follow me. Follow the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, we see the article of faith. When we say belief in the messengers, it's to follow the messenger. We have to follow him, we have to obey him. So over here, uh, we, we want to focus that, you know, Iman cannot be complete without righteous good deeds. And this is what even Shaykh al-Islam in Taymiyyah, he, he mentioned. He said that it is inconceivable that someone who has true faith in his heart and Allah has prescribed for him salah, zakah, and hajj and fasting in the month of Ramadan and he lives his whole life without doing a prostration, without paying the zakah, without fasting in the month of Ramadan and without going for hajj, it is inconceivable. He said it cannot be conceived that how can this person who says he has true faith and he doesn't perform these actions. It's, it's illogical, it's irrational, it, it's inconceivable. Further, he said, which is quite scary, he said it can either be two reasons. One, that he is, you know, against Islam. He has this hatred against Islam or he has hypocrisy in his heart. May Allah SWT protect all of us. So when we say that, you know, Iman, it has to be followed by righteous good deeds. And this is something, you know, which we must be aware of. Now, Iman and Amal, they go simultaneously. We cannot separate them. And this is what even uh, Imam of uh, our righteous predecessors and the righteous scholars, they defined as one of the Salaf. He said, Iman is a proclamation with the tongue, action with the limbs and belief with the heart. Iman increases with acts of obedience and decreases with acts of disobedience. And accordingly, believers are of varying levels. It's interesting you mentioned that as well, because people have this issue. There was also, there's also possibly even today, but there was also obviously a group in the past, and maybe some people today, they believe that, you know, how can your Iman go up and down? Surely if it goes up, surely if it goes down, then it's just gone. And we know that the Sahaba, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, when we go home and we play with our wives and our children and we basically like we'd say modern terms we chill at home we feel that iman decreases but when we're with you our mind is so high and the prophet said himself it's not me or you or just some scholars who came out with this theory the prophet said indeed 
Al-Iman yuzidu wa yunqas. The Iman goes up and down. And then he actually went on to say, if you stayed, if you all stayed on this high level of Iman that you are when you're with me, continuously, that the angels themselves would come down from heavens to shake your hands <laughs> because you'd be so, your Iman would be so high that they, they would want to come down and shake your hand. So he showed us that the Iman, depending, and so of course, if you're in the masjid and you're praying or you're in an Islamic conference or lecture, you're going to have a high iman generally than if you're just sitting at home eating food. It's kind of common sense. So this is something which we have to understand that your in iman does decrease and increase. And the scholars have said obviously that it increases with good deeds and it decreases w by the sins and the bad deeds you do. So this is, a, a, this is something to show us as well that if you aim to have h high faith and true faith, then you have to aim and do your best to do good deeds. You can't keep committing the bad deeds because even if you feel you have a high iman, in reality you don't because of these deeds. We have a clear statement from Prophet Sallallahu that with, the, with your bad deeds, your iman decreases. That's right. And Abdullah bin Masood, uh, radiallahu anhu, one of the greatest Sahabi, he used to make dua that, Oh Allah, increase us in iman and certain belief. So he used to make this dua. Even Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahimullah, he, he used to say that iman, it increases with righteous good deeds, and it decreases in failing to perform righteous good deeds. So it's, it's natural and, and it can be practically felt, as you mentioned, you know, that if you're sitting in a masjid, or if it's the month of Ramadan, if it's the last 10 nights of Ramadan, or you wake up for tahajjud, or you are in haram, or, you know, when you are doing good deeds, you will feel that. You will feel that increase in Iman, contrary to if you are, you know, sitting in a, a place where music is being played, or, you know, you are, performing some evil act or someone you know is engaged in say you know performing some fawahish or some you know evil act you can clearly feel this that you know Im iman increases and it decreases therefore we are supposed to protect this faith through actions because if you keep doing righteous actions uh, the fard of course to prioritize apart from that even the nawafil it will help your iman to increase inshallah moreover if we see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the quran surah anfal ayah number two about the Sahaba, that when the verses of the Quran are recited to them, Zadatum Imana, that they increase in Iman. When the verses of Allah yeah. are recited to them, it increases them in Iman. So over here we see this, you know, that this is from textual evidence from the Quran, that Iman, it increases and it decreases, and therefore we have to protect this Iman. And how do we protect this? As I mentioned, you know, by performing good deeds, we will feel this increase in Iman. And when we abstain from the haram, from the forbidden things, from the forbidden deeds, then we will you know, protect our Iman from decreasing. And what's interesting to mention as well, SubhanAllah, we don't, offer, we don't often realize or we, don't, we forget that Allah has, uh, for, as a mercy from Him, has made it easy for us to do these good deeds and to get so much reward. We know that there's no such thing in Islam as you do one good deed, you get one reward. We know that the minimum is 10. Right. We know even with our salah, without going through the story, we know with our salah that we are rewarded tenfold. So it's like we prayed 50 prayers, even though we prayed five. We know that generally a good deed is rewarded tenfold and sometimes more. And then uh, as, as there's a verse in the Quran that says, may yasha, that Allah will increase the reward for those He wants. So we can go and do our good deeds and we can always get 10, 20, 30, 100, 1,000 rewards for doing one good deed. Whereas if we do the sins, we only get that one sin, that one sin recorded for that one bad deed. So Allah has made it easy for us to b balance our scales in theory with the good deeds so much more in weight than the bad deeds. So we have to kind of re reflect to ourselves, are we finding that we're doing more bad deeds than good deeds? Then that's a wake-up call. You know, Allah's made it easier for you from all aspects, even the reward. So why are you turning this gift away and you're doing more bad deeds than good? Well, that, and that also would, is a wake-up call because it's actually quite hard to do that. If you think about, if you're performing your five daily prayers and you're staying away from a lot of the haram, and you're doing other good deeds, it's actually difficult, in theory, for your scale of bad to be more or heavier True. than 
your good ones because you can only you only get a sin once but you could be getting in a day hundreds of good reward so if you feel that i think you know to be honest i think that my bad deeds scale is heavier than my good ones then you know that there's something definitely that needs to needs to be rectified you need to kind of check yourself because like i said it's so easy for us to get so much reward that's right and uh, as as you know uh, the door of repentance is always open for uh, a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah loves repentance so one should never you know think that oh my bad deeds are so many and I cannot perform uh, more good deeds and you know I, I'm gone I'm decree I'm, I'm gone out of my iman this is not what people should think they should always you know have this uh, spirit in them that I can get back I can get back on track and if they see the history the scholars some of the Sahaba they were off the track they were uh, in, in a life of you know deviancy but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them and they became the torch bearers of Islam so subhanallah uh, we should always keep this in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's door of repentance is open for us it is required you know that we take precaution and we have this taqwa of Allah in our life we protect our iman through righteous good deeds and we do not let it decrease as, as Shaykh uh, Saleh ibn Usaymin rahimullah he said that uh, keep doing the zikr of Allah and again, you know, this is the zikr of Allah is, is so easy. You know, whether you're lying down, you're standing, you're sitting, you're walking, you can keep doing the zikr of Allah. And inshallah, this can become a means of your increasing in iman. He said, keep doing the zikr of Allah because righteous deeds, it increases us in iman. It increases our iman. And this is the belief of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. May Allah have mercy upon them all. And that's interesting to mention because some people think that to do zikr, maybe you, without mentioning obviously, people who do an innovative way of dhikr but they think they maybe they have to be seated in a particular way and we know that Allah says in the Quran الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكِّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَوْتُ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِنًا سُبْحَانَكْ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Those people who remember their Lord where they're lying down, sitting on their sides and they think, they ponder upon the creation of the heavens and the earth and they say, so, oh our Lord, glory be to you, you did not create this this, you did not create this universe, you did not create this creation for nothing. So save us from the punishment of the hellfire. So we can see here that you can make these dhikr, these which are some of the best of righteous deeds, is making this dhikr just by, you could be dr driving in your car, you could be lying down, you could be relaxing on your sofa for example, and make this adhkar. I even remember one time that we hear different stories of the past, how people would make dhikr while they're baking the bread. Anyway, on that note, we're going to have a, another break now. Join us inshallah after this break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Just continuing before we enter the break, this importance of making these adhkar. Uh, I'm trying to remember actually, to be honest, but I believe it was you hear very similar stories, but I believe even uh, like uh, people like Imam Bukhari, uh, people like Ibn Taymiyyah, they would say that before they, they issued a fatwa or before they um, would enter a hadith into their books, that they would make istighfar hundreds of times, for example. And we know the Prophet himself, yeah. whose sins were forgiven, would ask Allah for repentance more than 100 times a day. And we know that his sins of the past uh, his sins are forgiven and obviously he didn't make sins like we make sins we know that the f that for lack of better words the prophets were sinless however they made w mistakes that could be classed as small mistakes but never as sins but we know that the Prophet ﷺ was forgiven he couldn't uh, but he would still spend every day in adhkar he would still ask Allah for forgiveness a hundred times so how about us and this is one of the one of the greatest rewards and we see people many people focus on dhikr but they focus it on the wrong way they believe that dhikr is sitting in a circle bouncing their head up and down saying the name of Allah thousands of times for hours a day this is not the dhikr we have so much dhikr and adhkar that sometimes people who are following the sunnah inshallah or trying to follow the sunnah they neglect we have these adhkar we have the du'as when we're leaving the house entering the house in the car, traveling, entering the mosque, leaving the mosque, entering the toilet, leaving the... In reality, we have so many of these adhkar 
that you can be making dhikr the whole day because this oh, you put your jacket on, there's a, the, you see yourself in the mirror, there's a dua. You're entering the market, there's a dua. Something that many of us are doing, those things I just mentioned now, on a daily basis. How much adhkar, how much righteous deeds and rewards do we get for doing that? Um, even the, the adhkar in the morning and the evening. We have adhkar that we're told, short uh, duas, that if we say them sincerely, that our sins will be forgiven even if they were like the foam on the sea. Or whoever says this dua before sleeping and dies will be from the people of Jannah. And whoever says it in the morning and dies before he reaches the evening will be the people of Jannah. So we have so many opportunities to get righteous deeds, to do righteous actions, which people assume when we say righteous actions, there's something which requires so much time and so much physical. Okay, I do my five daily prayers, I do a couple of sunnah, but I don't have time to do tahajjud every night or I, tr I don't wake up, or I don't have time to read Qur'an for two hours a day. Okay, read Qur'an for 15 minutes. Try now and again if you can to do extra prayers. But you, there's no excuse for not doing these adhkar. How many times do you find ourselves driving on the bus, on the train, and we can make these adhkar very simply on just one train journey. So it's quite simple, and I said this is a, a mercy that we don't sometimes realize when we have something that's good, or blessing, you know, there's that famous English saying that you don't realize what you have until it's gone. Until it's gone. And this is probably this, the story of our life that we won't realize the opportunities we had and how much we could have done in for so much little effort, but we didn't take advantage of them until, yes. and then we realize that maybe when we're either we're dead or we're close to death, and we realized all those years I could have at least done these azkar or these kind of things. And uh, this is obviously advice to to myself and to everybody. We probably all, most of us, fall into this kind of category. That's right. As you know, one of the verses of the Quran describes that you know a person when he nears his death and he knows he's about to die, then he thinks that you know now I will pay sadqa, now I will give in charity. So give sadqa, do righteous deeds, you know, before death comes upon you. Before, because this is our ultimate examination. You know, a person might fail in the university, he might again apply for an another university, he might go to some other uh, country, he might, you know, pass in some other stream. But the test of this life, this is just one time. You know, we, we don't get another chance. We don't come back in this world after we die. We don't get a retest. We don't get a re-examination. We don't have other option. This is the only option we have. So we, we have to pay heed upon this. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, the best of people are those who are given long lives and they do good deeds. They have the best of deeds. And the worst of people are those who have been given long lives and they perform evil deeds. This is a hadith in uh, Tirmidhi. Uh, through this we come to know that, you know, subhanAllah, those whom Allah has blessed with uh, a long life, good health, wealth, money, you know, security, safety, and uh, whatnot. So they should focus that what is, you know, uh, their focus in life and what are they doing in their life. Is it spent upon doing righteous deeds? And inshallah, it's good. You you know expect uh, a good outcome out of that. But if it's spent, you know, in wasting the time in performing evil deeds, in wasting the money and life and health and time and so on and so forth, then it's it's the danger line. Because as we said, uh, that if you want to increase in iman, you want to protect your iman, you have to follow it with righteous deeds. If it was not the case, then why would the Sahaba, why would the Prophet ﷺ, why would they slog, why would you know, they strive so hard in performing deeds? As you mentioned, you know, the Prophet ﷺ is uh, saying istighfar hundred times. He's standing in Salah where Mother Aisha anha, she sees and she sees that the, the, feet, of the, the feet of the Prophet ﷺ is, is swollen. And still he, want, he says that I want to be a thankful slave. You see the Sahaba, you see the Tabi'in, Tabi Tabi'in, you know, they used to recite the Quran, they never missed the Quran. They used to consider anything apart from the Quran as lagh, as you know, uh, winless talk, the, the Sahaba, the, the Tabi'in. So similarly, we see that they used to strive and they knew exactly what they wanted in life and they had a clear focus of the hereafter. This is what, you know, we must also get into uh, our perspective of life that, you know, why are we here and what is our focus? Our focus is the hereafter and we have to build that hereafter. And that can be done through righteous deeds because that's what, you know, goes with us in the grave and that's what will be weighed on the scale on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from, a, you know, bad end. We do good deeds keeping hereafter in the mind. This is what we want uh, our focus to be. And we hasten to do good deeds. As the Messenger of Allah said, hasten to do good deeds before there comes 
tribulations like pieces of a dark night when a man will be a believer in the morning and a disbeliever by evening or he will be a believer in the evening and a disbeliever by morning selling his religious commitment for worldly gains. This is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 118 and the Prophet Sallallahu is encouraging us that hasten, hasten to do good deeds whether it's the faraid and we have to prioritize that uh, you know we have to first fix our faraid that's the salah, zakah, psalm, hajj you know for the sister wearing the hijab and when it comes to abstaining from haram that is riba the major sins obedience towards parents and so on and so forth we have to fix the major things first and apart from that uh, we have to hasten to do good deeds whether it's da'wah whether it's reciting the Quran memorizing the Quran whether it's treating others kindly giving charity apart from the zakah so you know one can always sit and make a chart for himself as to these are the faraid it's it's not difficult you know as we've discussed in previous episodes as well that you know if you see the forbidden things the haram it's it's very less as compared to the halal which we have in islam so what is forbidden it's it's clearly out there in the quran and sunnah so you see that okay am i indulged into this forbidden thing and then you make a chart for yourself then you see what are the obligatory things which are required from me to become a good slave of Allah and then you go on to perform those obligatory actions and then you see what are my skills and what are the voluntary things I can do for the sake of Allah whether it's teaching the Quran whether it's giving da'wah whether it's helping the community whether it's helping the poor and needy whether it's providing you know services whatever you have educating the ummah educating the youngsters doing counseling and so on and so forth so engage yourself in things you know which will uh, be productive and which will bring benefit in this dunya and in the hereafter don't be in a state that I just believe in Allah you know I say the shahada and that's it now nothing is required from me I just keep following my desires and nothing will come uh, ahead the Prophet Sallallahu he used to strive hard he encouraged us to good deeds and this is what we must do and the Prophet Sallallahu also mentioned that consistency in deeds is loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so therefore when we make a plan for ourselves we need to see how can we be consistent in a particular act of worship. If we see that uh, I can pray Qiyamul Layl, say for 20 minutes every night, then perform it. If you see that you cannot do it, then try to find out a way where you can be consistent. If I can recite uh, one juz a day rather than five juz a day, try to be consistent in that. And then that's what you said because <coughs> you, you mentioned that Prophet said Allah loves those things that are consistent and the continuations is even if they are small in amount. So it's not always about it's better for you to read daily Quran for half an hour than to come up only once a month and read Quran for five hours and then no Quran for another month and then another then 10 hours each month at one time. It's better for you to do this daily Quran of 10 15 minutes than to come. So this is the important thing is to do consistent good deeds even if they're small rather than coming and doing for one day lots of good deeds and then then stopping most of the good deeds for another month or two and then coming again and doing like a week of good deeds and then doing nothing for a few months That's so this, right. is the, this is what should be done yeah, consistency is important for our deeds and apart from that you know we, it's it's important for us to mention this to our viewers that uh, for us uh, our deeds to be accepted two basic conditions are required number one is that it has to be sincerely for the sake of Allah we have to have this sincerity, this ikhlas for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, it has to be accordance in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Because the Prophet he has shown us the way. He, he is our guide and he has shown us our, the way how to perform the acts. We cannot come up with our own innovative and innovations in the deen and say that this will bring us closer to Allah. As you mentioned, you know, a simple example of azkar, as people do in a, a crazy method, in a crazy way. This is not what Islam taught us. This is not what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. The Prophet taught us the azkar as to, you know, we can even uh, do it while standing, walking, sitting. And it's, it's, it's a simple way. It's not, you know, so complicated as people have made. And similarly, other acts of worship, like uh, people, they have... You know, in some places, you know, they, they consider the Isha Salah to be like 17 rakahs. Where people think and they, you know, they go bizarre as to 17 rakahs to be offered. It's better, you know, I just go. So such things put people away from Islam and from fulfilling their obligations. 
Isha Salah is like four is fard if the person is praying and the witr is there. But when it comes to you know some places they have this specifically you have to perform 17 rakahs and this salah is so many rakahs. So we must make things easy for people when, and things will be easy when we stick to the sunnah. Sticking to the sunnah will, will make you feel that yes the deen is easy and Allah has prescribed ease for us in his deen. It's not difficult as you know people they perceive or think. So uh, righteous deeds they are required for us to you know increase in iman and it's it's a condition it's a condition for our iman to be complete faith it consists of iman and therefore uh, we say that someone who comes up with this idea that I, I i believe in allah but i won't do righteous good deeds you know he's just like that employee who goes to the organization who goes to office and then he says, yes, uh, I love my organization, I love my company and everything, but he does not perform his job profile. He's an accountant, but he doesn't take care of the accounts. He doesn't care about it. He will either be kicked out or he will be fired. So similarly, we need to get this right that when we say we believe, we have to perform righteous good deeds to complete our iman. As Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, rahimullah, uh, Salih al-Fawzan, hafizullah, he said that, even the disbelievers, they had you know, this confirmation of belief in their heart when it comes to the Quran, when it comes to the messenger of Allah They knew he is the uh, true messenger of Allah, but they did not reflect it through actions. They did not accept him. They did not uh, believe in his message and they did not perform what he wanted them to do. So this is what Sheikh Salih al-Fazan says that uh, the argument of such people who say that only belief only the proclamation from the tongue, only the shahada is sufficient and no good deeds. He says that even the disbelievers, they knew in their heart that Muhammad Sallallahu is the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Lastly, we would just like to touch on this aspect as to there are people, there is a community where they perform good deeds according to their understanding and caliber, but they do not have iman, they do not have faith. So over here, we say that you know both of these things are required iman and amul salihat both go hand in hand for our salvation someone who says okay i'm feeding the poor i'm making toilets i'm making this i'm helping the community it might be good in one sense or the other but the main thing the priority is the tawheed of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recognize the creator and to recognize the purpose of our existence so someone who says i'm performing good deeds but I don't have faith, I don't need religion, I don't need Allah, I don't need all uh, the way of life, then we say this person is also on the deviant way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase all of us in iman and righteous deeds. So jazakallah khair for that brother Muhammad Khan and jazakallah khair for coming on. And okay. also for the viewers, we hope that this will encourage myself and all of, all of us to focus more on righteous deeds inshallah and realize the connection between righteous deeds and our faith. And until next time inshallah, same time, same place. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.